chant in praise of the Buddha. One of the phrases we chant is that he was the unexcelled teacher of those fit to be tamed. Notice that's not everybody. When he set out to teach, he said, the doors to the deathless are open, and he says, let those who have ears show their faith. That's qualification. Not everybody has ears. We have ears, of course, but not everybody listens. There was one time someone came to the Buddha and asked him, doesn't the Buddha have compassion for all beings? And the Buddha said, yes. He said, why don't you teach everybody the same then? He said, it's like being a farmer. You have three kinds of fields, the good fields, the middling fields, and the poor fields. And say you have only a certain amount of seed. Where does it go first? Well, it goes to the good field. And if there's any left over, then it goes to the middling field. And if there's still some left over, then you give it to the poor field. In the same way, the Buddha said there are those people who are really receptive, those who are somewhat receptive, those who are actually antagonistic. So even though the Buddha had goodwill for everybody, he also had equanimity for everybody. And he had to balance the two. And it's the same with us. When we're practicing the sublime attitudes, we practice goodwill for everybody, compassion for everybody, empathetic joy for everybody, but also equanimity for everybody. That's our grounding. To remind us on the one hand that not everybody's going to be happy. You may wish for people to be happy. You see someone suffering. You wish to see them get out of the suffering. Or you see someone who's already happy and you're happy for them. But there are cases of people you'd like to help and it's impossible. Either you don't have the strength or they're not cooperative. And those are cases where you have to develop equanimity. A large part of the discernment we have to develop in the practice is knowing when goodwill is appropriate and when equanimity is appropriate. It's like being a doctor. You have goodwill for all your patients, but some of the patients you realize you can't help. Either because the disease is too bad or they're ornery, they won't take the medicine. So you have to have equanimity for the cases you can't help, so you can focus on the cases where you can. And even with an individual, there's some of the symptoms you can't help, but there's some of the symptoms you can. So you focus your goodwill on the ones that you can. You focus your energy on the ones that you can. And you don't let yourself get dragged down by the others. So equanimity is there to keep us from suffering from our goodwill and compassion and empathetic joy. As John Fung said, we don't have the equanimity of concentration. The goodwill is suffering. Compassion is suffering. Empathetic joy is suffering. So we work in getting the mind to settle down. So we can have a sense of well-being inside. Not otherwise, we try to feed off of our own compassion. In other words, we feel good about being compassionate. But sometimes that leads us to help people in cases where they're just going to pull you down, or they get you really entangled. Remember, one of the principles of the practice is that you're practicing for unentanglement. And there are a lot of people out there who are just pleading for help, and they'd be all too happy to pull you down, get you all entangled. And it's not good for them, so you're not really helping them. And you're certainly not helping yourself by allowing yourself to get entangled like that. So it requires a combination of concentration and discernment, because it's the discernment that allows you to see which of those attitudes is appropriate for which cases. The concentration gives you the strength. The wisdom gives you the insight into your own motivations about why you might want to help somebody else. 
whether you really can trust those motivations or not. And the combination of concentration and discernment allows you to step back and view the situation with more objectivity. View yourself with more objectivity. So you can figure out what, what are your capabilities, how much can you help somebody else, and how far you're getting to the point where you're harming yourself. Because the help we give to others comes under the principle of generosity. And one of the basic principles of generosity is that you don't give to the point where it hurts. In other words, you don't give in a way that harms you or harms others. So even though our compassion should be limitless, we have to realize that we as human beings have our limits. And the help we give to others is main, meant mainly as part of a practice in which we have to give our primary focus on the training of our own minds. As the Buddha said, he doesn't praise people who help others to the point where they're getting harmed. The ideal person is someone who helps him or herself and then can help other people. Next below that is the person who knows how to help him or herself. Because it's only when you can straighten out your own mind that you can really know, well, what does it mean to straighten out a mind? What does it mean to straighten out a life? And only then can you give reliable help to others. And watch out for the conceit, the self-image that comes from going way out of your way to be helpful. In situations where it's not appropriate, you have to ask, well, why am I doing this? What inside the mind is getting fed by this? And here again, it requires concentration to get the mind still enough to see these things, and discernment to ask the right questions. So each of the Brahma Viharas has to be limitless. In other words, something you can apply to anybody in any situation. And that requires the discernment to say, well, when is it appropriate to apply goodwill, together with compassion and empathetic joy? And when is it appropriate to, to develop equanimity? There are no hard and fast rules for this, as with all the elements of this path, which is a middle way. It requires a balancing. Not that you're half-hearted in your compassion, or half-hearted in your goodwill, or half-hearted in your equanimity. It means figure out what's appropriate for what time. And when you can balance these different qualities in this way, then the people around you benefit. And you benefit, too. If you can't find the balance, then you can do harm in both ways. So work on your concentration to get the mind in a good, solid position. And work on your discernment, both into the situations around you and into the situations in your own mind. So that the help you give is genuinely helpful. both for others and for yourself.